Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, engaging, and totally interesting. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today is going to be kind of an interesting interview. So, you know, sometimes we all see different things. We're talking about human trafficking, human smuggling, but we don't know a whole lot about it. My guest today is going to help us understand what's going on. Her name is Cynthia D. Horton. Cynthia, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Ricky? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today, because this is an important subject that very few of us know anything about. It is a complex subject. Yeah, so let's, okay, let's buckle seat belts and jump right in. So right. first of all, Cynthia, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in what human trafficking, human smuggling is. My short answer is I was minding my own business. Uh, let me give you a little <laughs> bit of background on that. I had just started my company and uh, some friends of mine who were working in some other areas had, uh, they knew I was doing some consulting and they said, hey, we have this great opportunity. Could you kind of help us bridge this gap? It's only going to be about three to six months. And so I took a look at it. It was human trafficking. I didn't really know a lot about it at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was with uh, Paso del Norte Center of Hope. And I said, you know, sure, you know, I'll, I'll help you bridge that until you can find somebody to fill that position. And so my, you know, six month contract ended up two years. And so during that, my, you know, throwing, throwing me in and having to tread water was, was how I learned. Wow, and which is probably the best way to do it from the ground up with something like this. Can you tell us what the difference is between human trafficking and human smuggling? Sure, you know, a lot of times those, those are the most confused subjects because they get intertwined a lot. We hear it on the news, we, we hear it coming up. The difference between trafficking, human trafficking and smuggling is that smuggling is against borders and trafficking mm -hmm. is against people. So you can, you can actually be smuggled into the United States and not be trafficked. Uh, trafficking is when, you know, somebody um, takes, uh, uses their authority over you. So there has to be movement of that person. There's the sale of that person. There's some transactions going on um, and they, they don't have the right to choose. So, and smuggling is against borders. Okay. See, I didn't know, I did not know that. So I'm excited to hear that. Now, Cynthia, there's a lot of, we travel, we go everywhere and, you know, we live in these fabulous, amazing neighborhoods. And so surely this is not going on anywhere that we would be, right? Surely we would think that, but that's not the reality of it. And mm -hmm. I'll give you a case in point. I was in, um, and this is, this is even before I got started in the work, I was um, visiting a friend of mine and there was a house on the block that kind of stood out to me for, for different reasons. For one reason, you know, I really liked the landscaping. I, it was ultra modern in a, in a seventies neighborhood, you know, in the, you know, in the, in different neighborhoods have different, you know, areas where they were, you know, initially developed. And uh, this one was new and it just really stood out to me and it had cameras on the outside. And um, after I got involved in this work, I went back by that house. And the thing that stood out to me was that the barbed wire that was surrounding the property oh, wow. was not stopping the people from coming in. It was set in a way that it was keeping people that were in from coming out. Wow. And I would not have learned that mm -hmm. um, had I not been involved in this work. So, mm -hmm. it, yes, it could be uh, somebody in your in your neighborhood. Um, it is um, it is horrendous. It's one of the it's one of the fastest growing criminal industries in the world. Um, and because it's because there is such a demand for it, and you know the demand would stop if people would you know would stop that you know stop feeling that right. pipeline. And, I think one of the things that's um, most shocking is that it does, it happens in every neighborhood, every zip code. It can, the potential to happen in every neighborhood, every right. zip code, it doesn't, it, it's non-discriminatory. Yeah, and that's what is, like you said, is so crazy about this. You think that, you know, you live in this ph phenomenal neighborhood with these gorgeous homes, surely no one is being trafficked in your area. But then, Cynthia, you, you know, you mentioned the supply and demand of the thing. What is the demand that is being supplied? the demand is sex that that is that is the commerce wow. and you wow. know um, there's been a, a a quote that's been quoted many times you know mm -hmm. traffickers will say you know i can sell a drug once but a girl i can sell a thousand times and so the demand you know we see there's just an insatiable demand for sexual activity these days it is it is rampant and it's everywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, i was 
innocently watching Nightline one night and there was a commercial that came on about, and I don't even remember the name of it, but it's fans, something about fans. And it's this really sensual um, videos that you can do. And they're talking about how this person can make a hundred thousand dollars, you know? And so people are, um, we live in a hypersexualized society. Mm -hmm. Um, I was reading, there was a, every year there's a, a huge, um, cross country sweep called Operation Cross Country. And in one of the in one of the most recent ones, the youngest, the youngest, the oldest one was found uh, near El Paso. How old do you think the the youngest one was? Well no, I'm sorry, the, the wow. oldest one. The oldest I'm one was scared. sixteen. Sixteen years old. The oldest was sixteen that was recovered in this sweep. Mm -hmm. And so we we desperately want to, you know, we don't want to traumatize our kids, but we want to let them know that there are some internet dangers out there. And, yeah. you know, there are plenty of resources out there. As a matter of fact, El Paso mm -hmm. Center for Children will be doing a, um, uh, they have links to um, teaching uh, parents about internet safety and things like that. So there are plenty mm -hmm. of opportunities to learn. And mm -hmm. I encourage, you know, your viewers to learn. It is, it right. is, a, it is vast and it looks That's different crazy. in different viewers. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you're talking about the oldest in this particular thing was 16 years old. I'm afraid to think about how old the youngest was. Where are they, where are they getting these kids and things from? And is it just females? Oh, no. Um, males, females, young, old, you yeah. know, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, it is, it is non-discriminatory. Trafficking is not only sex trafficking, there's labor mm -hmm. trafficking. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, labor trafficking is the largest percentage of it, um, and it happens all the time, you know, people mm -hmm. cannot, um, you know, they're never going to be able to get out of that work cycle because they're owned by somebody because somebody has, you know, paid the price for them to get over here and they've um, mm -hmm. taken their papers away from them. There's no way that they can um, seek help. So wow. um, we really want people to be aware. And, you know, there's so many um, avenues. Rebecca Bender, she's got tremendous resources on mm -hmm. her website. Um, locally, there's Advocates for Freedom. There's um, wow. Center for Hope. Mm -hmm. You know, so avail, you know, people can avail themselves of the trainings that they have, the outreaches mm -hmm. and the awareness. Yeah. And, and we asked the question, you know, like, where, where are they getting these people from? Are they literally just driving up the street, snatching people up? Or are they doing, you know, for the lack of a better term, recruiting, if you will? There is recruiting. There's grooming. Uh, most people think that, you know, the vast majority of those that are trafficked are snatched off the streets and mm -hmm. are held in chains, and that's not so. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me give you a scenario about um, what's happening in our schools. And there's a there's a, a wonderful booklet put out by the Department of Education called you know Human Trafficking in Our Schools. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that they do is you know there there's what they call a bottom girl for just a safety term, you okay. know, instead of using a more vulgar term, but sure. um, there's somebody that is wants to get out of the game and they've got to go recruit somebody. So oh the easy, God. where's, where's the easiest place to recruit 12 to 14 year olds, you know, oh nine to gosh. 12 year olds is in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the demand, when you, when you think about how salacious this crime is, mm -hmm. um, it is, it has grown people, grown men and women that are seeking after these, these young victims, right. you know, and mm -hmm. young and old. But, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. let me give you a perfect example. This is this story came out of um, San Antonio. Okay. Um, this, these two girls wanted to go to a party. You know, they wanted to be a part of the in crowd. Mm -hmm. um, they found on social media that there was going to be this house party. Uh, didn't tell their parents. They told their parents that they were going to be spending the night at each other's ha homes. Um, they go to this house party. Uh, one of the young ladies says, you know, I need to use your restroom. Can you tell me where it is? Um, mm -hmm. She goes into the restroom. The minute she closes the door, she knew something was wrong. Um, because it was no, there was no way to get out. Once she was in, she was in. There was no way to get out of that facility. Um, she's trapped in there, screaming on the, you know, pounding on the door. Nobody can hear because there's a loud party going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Her friend that she comes with, they, she's inquiring about her friends. They say, oh, she left with somebody, you know, about an hour ago. Wow. Um, you know, so her, she leaves. Um, the next day, you know, that part, that party's gone because it was a rave. They, they were all gone. She was trafficked throughout San Antonio and I think California for the last, for the next six months. Um, and it, and it happened very innocently because she was at a party, but we have to be aware of, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know who, what's who's, out who's there. reaching out to us and why. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause you hear so much about these, you know, on the internet and, and with all the cool new apps and everyone's jumping on and everybody wants to be, you know, the next viral video, the next, this, the mm -hmm. next, that, you know, I, I wonder how easy is it 
for somebody to see something online. Hey, I can help you go viral. I can make you famous. And before Super you know easy. it, you know, there they are. So with just everyday folks out here doing their thing, what can we look for? How can we help? Well, usually what I do is I'll, when I'm talking to a crowd, one of the things I'll ask them is, how many of y'all are on Facebook? How many of y'all are on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. You know, and pretty much, you know, 99.9% .9 of the room, you know, raises yeah. their hand. Mm -hmm. And so we show them how people are trying to recruit through Facebook and through, I mean, just simply through LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. I ask them, have you ever, have you ever received a friend request from someone you did not know? Mm -hmm. And most of the time there, there was a series of texts. And this is when I first got involved, you know, the, ex, the FBI was doing a training and they were showing this. Uh, list of conversations um, that was going out. It was just random. And it oh. said, hey, you know, would you like to make some money? We do this, you know, what, however you want to do it. You know, there was very vague information, but it was just talking about how much money you could make. And he was, you know, this guy was saying how much money he, he was making and recruiting these girls. He sent them out a blast text to all these girls. And so many girls had responded back. They didn't even know who they were talking to. And they're like, oh, hey, how are you doing? And that's what we want people to be aware of is, is who, who are, who are your kids talking to? Who are you talking to? You know, yeah, do you know that person? You know, are you, are you, you know, meeting up with them, you know, at a, at a location that's not known? Does something not feel right? Yeah. If something doesn't feel right, then trust your gut. You probably ain't right. You know, and then yeah. you go to the malls, you know, I don't cause I hate the malls Ugh, anyway. So you're at the mall and you, you see something that looks a little off. I mean, what would, what would it look like? Would it be a grown creepy looking guy with this 16 year old little girl scared to pieces? Is it that obvious or is it something even more subtle than that? Well, you know, sometimes it is that obvious that something's wrong. And, and a lot of times traffickers will take uh, their victim out to a very public place because they've controlled them to a point where they say, you know, if you, nobody cares, you know, I can take you to the middle of somewhere and nobody cares. And so they prove that point. They take them out to the middle of the mall. They're in a, in a restaurant. I mean, would you think it bizarre if you saw an older man, maybe in his fifties with an 11 year old girl sitting at a restaurant eating? I probably Most of the wouldn't. time, no, you would say, yeah. oh, look, they're with their grandfather. How oh, sweet. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, but sometimes we need to take that second look. We need to look a little deeper and see what's going on. Is the girl mm -hmm. making eye contact? Does she look like she's afraid? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a great story uh, that came out uh, on Delta Airlines. A, a very alert stewardess saw that I something saw was that. going on that it was, and she wrote a note to the to a little girl and, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's things like that. And there, there's training for different industries, whatever industry you're in, find out about the training program because it looks different in different industries. Oh my gosh. Cynthia, this, this topic is, is incredibly fascinating and so scary though too. But hey, everybody, look, if you wanna get in touch with Cynthia, we're gonna have all of her contact information below. We're even gonna get some numbers for you also that if you see something, you'll be able to say something or at least make the call. And don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up and we want to hear your comments. Cynthia, thank you so much. But my friend, before we let you go, <laughs> Okay. We got to play our game. All right. So the game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. Okay. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Okay. Android or iPhone? Android. Read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Wallflower or life of the party? Wallflower. Okay, really? Cynthia, I, okay. You know what? Yeah. It's, it's your choice. <laughs> I, I'm moving on. Whatever. Summertime That is the fun. misconception that people have. I know. I, I, I do. I, I have that because I think that you are the life of the party. But again, whatever. It's your story. <laughs> Wallflower, I'm sorry. Um, summertime fun or winter wonderland? Um, summertime fun. Mm. Eat to live or live to eat? Eat to live. Out in nature or in the house? In the house. Coke or Pepsi? Um, Pepsi. Hmm, I'm surprised at that. Drive or ride? I don't drink sodas. I know, me neither. So, you, right, you have to pick. You feel like you have to pick. Would you rather drive or ride? Ride. Mm, got a little princess complex going on. I like it. <laughs> I like sports or I don't care. 
I like sports. Yeah, me too. So, Cynthia, when you were younger, what was your first job? <laughs> that would be in my parents' house pulling weeds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your first paying job, that, My girl. first job was at Whataburger. I started at Whataburger. All right. I did not know that. You guys, yeah. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for being here, Cynthia. I really appreciate you. And don't forget, you guys, we'll see you all next time on Extra. Thank you.